okay a slightly short tutorial today hopefully um, so I've already just set up the height map for this uh, just like a, a standard uh, brick wall and what I want to do is colorize it and I'm going to use uh, a color gradient or a gradient rather dynamic node so uh, I'd seen this node about you know before I started using it and I really scratched my head and wondered what it was all about uh, so let's have a look so oops as you see we've got gradient map and gradient dynamic and you pop it in and it's not uh, especially obvious as to what it's all about uh, so we have two inputs we have a grayscale input and a gradient input and the gradient because of this split uh, orange gray box we know can be either color uh, or it can be uh, grayscale so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to create an input a grayscale input well actually I'm not going to create one uh, I'm going to use my height map here there we go and now in the gray uh, in the gradient input the color input I'm going to import a photograph so somewhere around here I should have some uh, brick photos that I was testing on earlier and I've just sort of picked out a couple of bricks and I've dragged uh, dragged them here so one I was I was trying to experiment to see whether a smaller picture would have a much of an effect and frankly it didn't too much so I've just dragged it dragged and dropped it in I'm going to link resources and now I can plug that in there and when I double click you'll see that it colorizes it according to this or a point in which this uh, gradient is being picked up so it's taken all the colors from this uh, image and then given me a range and we can see that range if I put a, um, a quick couple of nodes in so first one I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick a gradient map uh, rather a gradient linear one and because you know by default this uh, the next few nodes we're going to use go from left to right uh, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and from there I'm going to add a uh, where is it not a core uh, a quing no <laughs> oh, goodness it is no oh goodness uh, it's quantized that's what I was looking for sorry I had Quinn stuck in my head and it wasn't going away and that will transform this gradient into a selection essentially and by default it's three and if I turn that up you'll see I get more or less grades of uh, black and white or grey and then we can use our gradient dynamic or another gradient dynamic to merge these together so if I put in gradient dynamic here and pop that in there that in there and that over to there I will get a different result so you'll see it's much less detailed and if I now plug this into whoops my color output we should see what it looks like now we have some control over this uh, first of all in the um, gradient map itself we can change the input position so as I change the input position you'll see that the the colors change as it samples different parts of this image and it's a question of going through your um, you know just sliding through our gradient inputs until we get something close to what we want now I almost had it then I think that one will do it <coughs> uh, but we can also add in another node here an HSL a hue saturation luminance to further give us a little bit of control so I can change the hue don't really want to all the saturation all the lightness here and I'm just going to bring the lightness down a tad until I get some that looks a bit more red bricky there we go so still it's you know not the best <coughs> excuse me 
let's have a look over here um, because essentially our grayscale input isn't all that exciting you know it's pretty much uh, how can I put it um, very broad so what we can do is add some additional things into that so let me just pull this backwards a little bit so I've got a little bit of space to work so I can pop in here say a noise of some description um, what do we go for some not quite as uh, bad as the other one let's go for a dirt and then we'll put a blend node in and I'll plug that into the top and I'll plug our output from here into the middle and then I'll feather back the opacity till I've got something that I roughly want. Now you'll see that it is actually sort of changing the um, mortar colour. Sorry, I kept wanting to say concrete, but it's not obviously. Um, but that's not a problem because we're going to mask that out in a little while. So if I now plug that into the top one, we'll get a much more complex um, map, which is good I think uh, well no it's definitely good <laughs> and you know we can build up levels of detail and levels of detail until we get to a point where you know it looks perfectly like brick now one of the things that I do want to do here is just um, I do want to institute some sort of blur and I'm not sure whether to put it before or after I think I might put it before uh, or no I can't make that smaller so let's uh, select this noodle for space and uh, blur whoops not blur and I'll just use the standard blur for the moment and then I'm just going to take this down a little bit just to make everything a little bit softer there we go now we see we've got some very harsh kind of transitions here now we could deal with that I think back in our uh, Quantiv grayscale if I increase the number of samples we'll get increasingly more uh, pattern and detail to this and you know it's all about finding the right place for you maybe adjusting your saturation up or down even the lightness until you get to the sort of effect you want and that's not kind of not bad for what it is I'm a little bit concerned about this uh, kind of grain here I'm not, not so concerned I'm going to do anything about it um, but yeah so we can add further noises to this so if I pull these back we could add increasing levels of noise <laughs> Oh, sorry I forget I can't really select the way I think I can uh, we can put some new uh, noises in there to get down to a lower and lower level okay so in the next one what we'll do is uh, we'll perhaps add some extra noise and we're going to add it before and after to you know get a good effect so I shall talk okay so let's put some more detail over this so we'll add another blend node and we'll put our current result in there and we'll pop that up to there which will blank everything out just for fun um, and then we'll put a noise in the top so I want to find a noise this time um, but nothing too exaggerated so we're going to go for spots perhaps Gaussian spots because we've got kind of a black and white feel to those and let's have a look and if I wind back our opacity we should get an idea of what's going on and see it updating as we go these spots are maybe a little too diffuse and I want to tighten those up so I'll put these through a levels then let's have a look whoops so the right way 
let's have a look there we go so let's try the other direction yep there we go so let's crush the black down and that's just put it's like a general noise over everything um, one of the things with this is <coughs> this image might be it's, it's too big it's covering a whole kind of area uh, and I would like it to cover more of an area so let us just pop in a, a tile node here uh, what do I want perhaps just a tile generator and I'll plug that into there and I'll plug that into there and then the tile generator I need to switch the switch the pattern to uh, image input so it's kind of <coughs> a bit regular uh, but at least it's now covering you know a much bigger area and you can't actually pick up I don't think you can pick up the repeating in it um, so yeah that's pretty good I think there we go so we can also add this then to our normal map and that will give us a bit of extra surface detail if I double click on the normal map we should see it there we go see we've got our little spots here not necessarily readily seeable up here um, you know in the actual texture itself but they are there okay <coughs> so the last thing I want to do is perhaps blur this a bit because we've got some very heavy transitions here and blurring any time before uh, this uh, gradient is not going to help us so what I need to do here is a blur whoops uh, but we want a blur color there we go so you see that's just wiped everything out pretty much uh, but that's just because our intensity is quite high as I bring it back to smaller and smaller numbers we'll get to somewhere a bit softer there we go okay so that's dealt with the uh, bricks more or less obviously you know you can get it how you want it you know pick a different picture well you definitely have to pick a bit different picture because I took this one um, you know just find a brick and you know get it and move it to as you want it uh, I'm finding here that my uh, luminance uh, my HSL is perhaps not quite right uh, so let me increase the saturation a little bit to get some a bit more red bricky rather than you know something pale there we go okay so next actually what I want to do is the same thing but I want to do it for the mortar uh, so we'll start with that okay so we're going to put the mortar in now and first of all I'm going to need some of these nodes not this one uh, just these ones and I've imported the picture like I did in the earlier part I'm just going to press ctrl D to duplicate all that and then I'll pop that picture whoops, into that HSL node double click on this one to recalculate them all and they're the colors I get I think perhaps uh, I want to bring this up a little lighter there we go let's double click here yeah that looks more mortary maybe a bit green but we'll see uh, so I've just picked like a general kind of concretey rocky texture here and we want to merge that in um, via a noise with our brick texture here so first of all let's have a some sort of noise and I might go for a clouds uh, let's go clouds 2 let's pop that down there and then we'll blend Actually, I'm going to put this in the top so I'll move that up there so pop that in the top pop that one in the bottom and now <laughs> What am I talking about? I haven't done the gradient bit yet. Silly man. Uh, so, <coughs> when I get around to typing properly, I want the gradient dynamic. 
and then a clouds node again typing is failing me I think I'll be able to type in a Cody type person there we go that's what we've got uh, it's a little busy or perhaps not busy enough we'll soon find out and now I'm going to bring this down here now what I'm going to merge these with is the original tile sampler map because I haven't really done anything too much to it so I'll pop a blend up here and I'm going to put the tile sampler into the bottom and then we'll put the uh, the bottom is the like an opacity it's a mask I'll pop that one into the middle and brick and then that one into the top and then because I always do uh, I'll swap them around because I get it wrong every time let me pop those back that way there we go now we've got a nice mortar color and if we pop that into our base color there we go we've now got a varied mortar underneath that and of course you know this is kind of the a start of the process rather than the end um, we can add all sorts of levels to this or layers to it uh, one thing I do like to do is pop something over the top uh, to you know bring everything together um, so if I pick out uh, let's try a clouds again oops not a cluds a clouds three this time let's pop that there We'll have a blend. We'll plug that one in there and that one in there. And then we'll pop some variation over the top of everything by turning down the opacity mode. Ah, so one thing is uh, I need this to be color. So to do that, select the noodle, the dotted red line, which tells me it's not going to work and typing gradient you can just pick a gradient map and then just make sure the output is color and then it'll be happy there we go so now i can drag my opacity down until i get something that's got a little bit more variation in whoops if i turn it right up we can see what's going on and then just feather it back until it's you know it's just subtly there there we go that's dimmed it out quite a lot so let me take its opacity down even further I could change my mode here from copy to multiply take my opacity back up so I can see what's going on so that's what it looks like uh, at full and then bringing it down you'll get to a point where you're happy with it uh, one thing I might want to do is just change the levels on this a little bit uh, just to tighten up some of those uh, whiter details because the white is going to have the most effect because it's one you know it's multiplied by the maximum value um, you know gray then gradually goes down till you get to black which is zero and anything multiplied by zero is nothing um, so let's select this noodle I'll add a levels there we go and then we can start to adjust this just got the levels no double click there so I can bring my white in that will make it darker I can take my darks down to make it kind of brighter or we could use the input values and that will really cut out a lot of the greys and give me a more kind of tightened mask so wherever you know this wherever it's black it's not going to do anything to our underlying texture uh, where it's white and gray it's going to do something and hopefully we can see that if i turn up my opacity map here and of course i've got it entirely the wrong way around <laughs> for a multiply at least yeah copy yeah definitely want multiply but because i've gone the wrong way around um <laughs> you know that's not going to work um, but I don't need an invert here I can just switch my black and white outputs and that will do the job there we go 
So now I can feather back my multiply and we'll get those dirty kind of areas over our um, over our wall. So there we go. Um, of course you can add more and more and more and more and more make it look you know better and better and nicer and nicer. Um, but I just want to do one other thing really on this for now and that's to uh, look at our edges and see if we can do anything about that. Uh, so uh, we'll have a look at that in the next one. So talk to you then. Okay, so we have our height information and we can convert that into some curvature information. So what we need for that is a curvature node. Uh, so I have one here which I've used for my roughness map. Um, but I also want to use it to drive some sort of colour information. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use our complete output here because it's very, very noisy. Uh, but I'm going to come back and use an earlier one. So right back at the beginning, I've got this node which is just blending the output of my tile sampler with a purling noise. And I'm going to drag that out and then type normal. So this is going to generate uh, basically the normal information out of that height map. And I can update the intensity here, but you generally see it doesn't really do much. Um, I think it's probably more appropriate for finer details. Uh, but from this one, I can output a curvature node. And that, if I double click on there, you'll see, we get these dark areas, which is curving one way, and we get these light areas, which is curving the other. So it's not very interesting in itself, um, but what I want to do is use that to derive something. Um, I'm also not happy that it's all that tight. So what I'm gonna do is delete that one and actually put in a, a curvature smooth, which does a very similar thing but it balances it out a little bit you'll see we've got some darker kind of gradients and lighter gradients uh, working on that um, we also have let's just type curve again curvature sobel so this is another kind of algorithm which we have some, uh, well, pretty much the same, but it's a different calculation. If I take the intensity down, you'll see it disappears. And if I go up, it gets a little bit stronger to a point and then it stops. Okay, so I wanted the curvature smooth. I just wanted to quickly show you the options. And that's going to give me this relatively nice um, you know, map. So after that, because this is grey, uh, mostly grey and you know grey uh, I want to run an auto levels on so auto levels will take a grayscale input and then adjust it to get the full range of colors so you'll see it looks quite like our original curvature and we've got some tighter lines but they are still more diffuse around the edges so Basically, it finds the lightest colour and makes it white, and it finds the darkest colour and makes it black, and then interpolates the greys in between. Okay, so I also want to use this as a kind of mask or a, you know an overlay, um, but I don't want there to be lots of greys in there. Yeah, I want most of it to be black. Uh, so I could do that from this curvature, but this this curvature smooth, but this gives me a much better chance of figuring out what's what. So if I put this then through a gradient map and then double click, go to the gradient and then click on the gradient and then just drag drop that key off there. And now I can map this as I want. So if I squeeze the black right down, you'll see I start to phase out the the greys in between. I'm narrowing down my you know range. And if I take the white and move that across, 
that's going to exaggerate what's left to be you know the edges essentially there's quite a bit of noise in here uh, but that's okay noise is not necessarily a bad thing um, but you can you know, adjust it as you want and if I push that even further up I need some sort of distance between them <laughs> because otherwise it's just black and white uh, but you just have to kind of adjust to what you want okay so with that said I can now pop a blend in here and then plug these in so if I put that over the top of that one that's what I get I can drag my opacity down and I should start to get some brighter edges uh, I might be better off on a sort of uh, a different um, you know different um, blend mode here uh, so if I go to max lighten we'll see we get a certain look and we can compare this to the original by you know simply double clicking on the original and I hope you can see there that that is actually bringing in some lighter edges around the bricks as if you know on the corners it's worn away and you know done various things so uh, what else do we want let's take that right up and see how that goes so you'll see max lighting is gone pretty much to white now so I just want to feather it back until you know it's at a, a nice kind of level and you're not really picking it up down here you can kind of see it uh, but it's not the most obvious thing but you know things that are not obvious it will really add to your texture uh, it might not be obvious you know at first glance but at first glance is you know your basically first chance to set this up as real and you know all those little fine details make a difference uh, right so I see that this curvature map is actually if we look at the thing is actually going more around uh, the bottom um, it's not really it's just the the displacement is kind of throwing it off a little bit so we might want to do something about that so let's see what we can do well we could blur this to bring it out a bit and because this is quite fine I'm going to use a blur uh, high quality uh, I can't use a blur high quality grayscale uh, so I'll have to use one of these so I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to bring the quality up you'll see now we get a much more diffuse kind of look so I'm just going to bring it down a little bit so it's not quite so tight but then after this I'm going to put an auto levels back in again to bring up my full value um, full value of colors uh, it's not going to let me because <laughs> it won't do it okay so let's just put a levels node in so obviously you won't do auto levels on a color node uh, I say obviously uh, obviously now so I want more white so I'm going to bring that up until oh, that's exactly what I get there we go and one last thing in that I do want to break up that kind of very harsh edge so uh, let's pop in a noise uh, I'm going to use a grunge uh, what should we use 14 and we use a blend I'm going to have to convert this grunge into a color map so I'll drag that out as a gradient Earlier we converted a black and white map to a color map by convert using the gradient map node and then we'll mess this about I think that's too low let's take it up a bit I think actually I probably need to change my blend mode to a subtract here 
uh, whatever we could use min darken. Oops. Or subtract. Where's subtract gone? No, it's right up there. There we go. That's more like it, and that's varying the edges as well as the uh, the main bit now. So now we get a much more kind of worn look to the whole thing. Uh, so that's that. And now I want to plug that into the top there. And now we've got some variation all over. Okay, so I hope you found that uh, vaguely useful. I'm sorry I didn't explain the whole bit down here. Uh, I, I'm aware that my videos go a bit long sometimes, uh, all the time. Uh, so I, I did that bit to maybe cut it down a little. Okay, so I, I hope you found it useful and I'll talk to you in another video.